Octavian Guzu, CTF enthusiast and ESC ECSC <laughs> team leader and software engineer at Bitdefender, is here to tell us all about his experience at the European Cybersecurity Challenge of 2018. So, Octavian, I'm really looking forward to hearing how the entire experience was for you. And, you know, maybe we'll find some new contestants for next year as well. Let's give it up for Octavian. Hi, everyone. How's your day going? Um, so my name is Octav. Uh, I'll be talking about my experience at the European Cybersecurity Challenge, or ECSC for short. Uh, I'll be covering more than just the contest. I'll be covering the whole experience that I've been through uh, during the online round, the boot camp, and the finals uh, in London this year. So let's get it going. Uh, some short description about me. I'm a, a fourth year um, student at the University Politecnica of Bucharest. Um, I, I'm a software engineer, uh, part-time at the moment, and I'm a CTF enthusiast. That is, I take part in CTFs in my uh, spare time, and I find them really challenging, and I'll be showing you in at the end of the presentation in some short demos about what it means to take part in a CTF. Um, also, I was the captain of the Romanian team at the European Cybersecurity Challenge this year. Um, and as I said, I will, I will, I will, I will talk about uh, what it meant for me. Also, you can find me on Twitter or on email uh, on these addresses. Okay, so a short introduction in security. Has anybody uh, had this message uh, on your phones at the end of October, I believe? Hands up. Okay, uh, so for those who don't know what this was, it was um, a huge uh, data breach from, from Facebook. Uh, they somehow messed up their access tokens and they um, leaked 30 million users. Uh, for some of them, half, 15 million, they leaked usernames and contact uh, information. And for 14 million, they leaked almost all details that were, they were listed in the, uh, the profile page. So sensitive information like uh, some personal details that are normally uh, hidden from the uh, 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 user just browsing their, their profile. Okay, uh, anyone has an idea about what security inc incident I'm going to talk about seeing only this image? Hands up. Okay, okay, so if you don't know, that is a Tesla Model S, and some researchers were able to hack a Model S by uh, cloning the key fob in 1.6 seconds. How they did that? Actually, uh, they found a method uh, by getting really close to the owner's key, and then getting really close to, to the car, and they were able to do some kind of simple brute force on an uh, eight bit, uh, number and they could just simply make another key in 1.6 seconds. So they were able to just um, make 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 uh, another key and just drive the car, uh, no alarm or security signals detected. And the fun part, yeah, they got a lot of money for it. Um, and in general, security uh, researchers will get some money uh, in the form of a bounty from big companies that uh, encourage them to do such sort of uh, bug bounting on their software because at the end of the day they will just improve their their software, right? Okay, so for someone that wants to get involved in cybersecurity, there are a lot of fields you can do this in. You can do network security where are uh, investigating the security on a network or um, you are securing a network for a client, for instance. You can do application security, where you get into examining applications and how safe they are. You can do mobile security, working on these kind of um, endpoints, devices, and uh, it's a really cool area. You can do malware analysis, which are a huge thing these days, because there's a lot of malware going over the internet and a lot of people are opening random stuff. So security um, experts in this field are, are essential. Um, you could do security auditing, that is, uh, for a company, you just analyze the, um, the software that they're, they're running and give, give, give them a re report at, at the end of the day. Okay, so for someone that has no idea about how to get involved in this type of um, field, uh, well, there's a lot of, of things you, you can do. You can be part of a community, say uh, Slack or IRC. 
Uh, you can join academic institutions, uh, university or schools. Uh, some schools, even in Bucharest, will teach you such type of security. Uh, you can go to training, conferences, certifications, but that really will cost you a lot of money. And the, uh, the, the best thing, in my opinion, is to take part in Capture the Flag events. Yay. Okay, so what is a Capture the Flag event? Has anyone here heard about the Capture the Flag event? Hands up. Okay, lots of people, that's great. For some of you that have little experience with web security, this web page may, may seem more than a login page. For instance, for me, when I look at uh, any login page, I don't think, um, I, don't, I don't see it as a regular uh, login form. I think about SQL injection or uh, say any kind of vulnerability that you may be finding within that login page. So. Um, what what you, what I see is that enthusiasts um, and security enthusiasts will always have that feeling to just go and try some some quotes or some dots here and maybe see if the login form will will check. Yeah. So as I said, there are educational challenges uh, the capture the flag events where you get vulnerable applications that are left intentionally vulnerable by their designers. And you have to get the vulnerability, exploit it, and get the flag. The flag is usually a plain text message, and it's a proof that you um, solved the, the, the task. And you submit flags, and you get points, and the scoring system is based on how difficult the task is. Say, an uh, easy task will be 100 points, and a, more, uh, and a harder task will be 500 points. And it's really worth uh, trying uh, difficult tasks because you get a lot of a lot of points uh, from them. Uh, the main website for finding CTFs is ctftime.org. Uh, there are listed any uh, upcoming CTFs or uh, CTFs that uh, happened in the past, and you can see write-ups on the tasks that were given there because you can uh, learn a lot from from write-ups. Okay, so the main subject for today: the European Cybersecurity Challenge. How it happens, it's an European CTF. Um, it it, it uh, merges a lot of countries from the Europe, and each country will have a, a team of 10 people, in which five of them are juniors, between 16 and 20 years old, and five of them are seniors, 21 to 25 years old. And the finals are held in different locations each year. This year, uh, finals was held in uh, London. Next year, they will be held in Romania. So uh, a reason for you to join them next year. The official website is this one, but you'll get the, the slides. Uh, you, you can visit it if, if you're interested. OK, so how does the uh, ECSC happen in Romania? So there are uh, multiple steps uh, for a, a contestant uh, if he wants to get to the final round. There will be an online qualification round where first 15 juniors and 15 seniors will go into the boot camp. And at the end of the boot camp, the final team is selected, that is the uh, five juniors and five uh, seniors that are going to be representing the uh, Romanian team uh, at the finals. And everything is covered. So all expenses are covered uh, and it's a really, really cool experience for you to go and learn something new even if you don't make it in, in the final uh, in the final team, you can just join again next year and maybe make it make it then. So, what I, I want to show in, in this picture, in the online qualification round, you get um, certain uh, diff different tasks uh, depending on the uh, field that they're related to. So, you can be solving programming, uh, exploit tasks, web tasks, and so on. So, if you're good on web, you can just solve the web tasks. And the points are made in such a way that if you solve uh, most of the web tasks and some easy tasks from the other uh, the other fields, you will you will make it into the bootcamp. So you don't have to be an expert in all of them. You can just be an expert in one of them and solve some easy tasks on the side, and you will make it into the bootcamp. This is the this, these are the scoreboards from the junior and the scoreboard uh, and the senior scoreboard next year uh, this year. Sorry. Okay. So the bootcamp happens here. Anyone knows where this is? Hands up. Okay, uh, the bootcamp is always held in, in Bran, uh, where you get uh, one week of trainings and CTFs, which uh, for me was very, uh, very, very uh, educative. We had an expert on each day from different companies, and they they were coming to 
um, give us some some talks on different fields that will be helping us in the finals. So one day we were talking about binary exploiting. The other day we were talking uh, we were talking about uh, web exploits and so on. So each day a different person uh, will be coming in the bootcamp to talk to you uh, about what they know best. So yeah, as I said, forensics exploits web and so on on each day. Okay. Um, some pictures of the main room where we were um, we were training. Um, the, the the room was uh, gathering us all, and we were living close to midnight each day because we were really enjoying working together. And the the fun part it gives us uh, staying there is, is 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 really cool. But you don't you don't only have to learn, yeah, because. Uh, if you just study day by day, you will not get anywhere. And we also went to paintball uh, as a fun activity. And the most fun activity, we played CS uh, on the local network. Okay. Uh, the finals. So, as I said, the finals were held in, in London. No need to ask where this is. Uh, we stayed at the London Tower Hotel, and the, the contest was in uh, another place in the... The, the the dock. There were 20 countries, and the CTF was uh, a, 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 a two-day CTF. Uh, so the points would 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 add up. Uh, the points from the first day with the points from the second day would add up, and the team that scores the most overall points will will be winning the uh, the finals. And you get lots of challenges because they outsource challenging uh, challenges from uh, lots of companies. So there are usually more challenges than you can solve. So you know you you should know how to divide your team into solving uh, the challenges that are worth more and are worth investing uh, your time into them because you play eight hours a day and eight hours the other day, so you get a total of 16 hours for the challenges, and the challenges are a lot more than 16 hours. So you know you should know how to balance uh, those tasks, because if you waste a lot of time on a very difficult task that you are not really sure m uh, whether you can solve it or not, you may be losing uh, both points and time. Uh, one really cool challenge that we had at the finals was the hardware hacking. We are given an Arduino Nano. Um, device and we we knew that it has a login form running on it so one may say okay this is pretty easy we just connect to the uh, rx and, and tx pins on it and we get the the binary where it was not that easy because the organizers uh, were not using the default pins for this so we had to just try all the all the possible pairs uh, on the on all the pins on the board and just try to send this something wait for a response no response. Move, move one pin. Send something. Wait for a response, and so on. So we finally got the the Eric's pins, Eric's and takes pins, and we were able to dump the binary file that was running um, onto the Arduino Nano. Okay. From from then we, we dumped it and we use um, OB, oh, OBG copy to get the binary from the from the hex file. From from now on you should decompile it and try to understand it, right? But we just use strings. Uh, so this is how the um, uh, hex file looks, just a bunch of addresses and then some hex data. But after we use strings on it, we get the uh, login info, which is root and password admin, and we also get the flag. So there was no need for us to dynamically run the, the application. We, we found all the information we needed in, inside the, the hex dump. And we also had an escape room challenge at the finals. Um, four of us got involved in some kind of um, um, small round room where we had uh, five main challenges. The first one was actually to uh, hack the uh, entrance somehow, so there was a code at the entrance, and we had some hints, so we, we were able to hack uh, into the, the room. Uh, in the room, I don't have um, images there, but there was a um, some sort of box, that they, they called it a bomb, so we had to somehow um, stop the bomb from exploding, and it was a combination of lock picking, uh, some electronics. Um, we almost got it uh, to, to to stop it, but we were we we lacked about 15 to um, one minute, uh, say 
time for us to stop the bomb, so we didn't actually manage to stop it f uh, completely. But we got some some partial points uh, on on the way. We really cool, really cool experience. Okay, so I'll be doing some demos uh, on the tasks that we had in the, both in the bootcamp and in the final, so you can get a general idea of uh, how things are happening at these types of, of contests. This one, this one's working. Okay, so I'm starting with the first task. Um, its name is dumpster. And what we get from the task description, we get a file, dumpster.jpg. So from the uh, extension, it should be an image. And we try to open it. But it doesn't show up. So there must be something wrong with the, with the image. So what I did, um, let me just move over to Kali. I looked into the... Um, into the hex dump of the of the image, so dumpster. Okay, so the first bytes are 8b, ac, and 8b. So I I don't know yet whether they are valid bytes, so I'll just Google it. Um, JPEG header. Okay, so on the first website. I can see that the first bytes in a JPEG file should be FF, D8, FF, while in my case they are 8B, AC, 8B. So clearly there's something wrong about this picture. We get, that we, we get a hint that it should be a picture because of the extension that the organizers gave us, but it's not really showing up as a valid picture because of the header. But what we see is that the first byte and the third byte are the same, which is the, which is the same in, the, in a valid JPEG image, because the first and the third byte are FF, both FF. So what I'm thinking at this point is that maybe the image was stored with some, type of, with some sort of a one byte key. So in this case, if you store uh, each byte with a certain key, it's, it's obvious that the first and the third byte will give the same value after the uh, XOR operation because the XOR key is, is one key. So how do we check if, if, this, if this matches? So we'll just XOR some, some, um, some numbers online. So I said that the um, valid first byte would be FF. And the byte that we have is 8B. So we XOR them together, and we get 64, uh, 74 in, in hexa. OK, so this is for the first byte. Let's check out the second byte, D8, which should be the valid byte. And the byte that we get is AC. So we sort them, and we get the same number. So we see some kind of, 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 of pattern at this moment. So one may think, OK, why not try sorting all the bytes in the file that we have now with 74? And this is exactly what I did. So in this Python script, I'm just storing each byte of the image with 74, and I will be printing the output in a new image called uh, xor.jpg. So let's run it. OK, it runs. And let's check what we got. So we got an image. OK, uh, this is pretty cool. But remember, our goal is to get the flag. There is no flag here, so we, we, we have to move on. Um, when we see a picture, the, the main thought is there, maybe there's something hidden in it. Because a lot of guys enjoy hidden um, some sort of um, files or, or some plain text or all other stuff inside of images. So if you want to, to look into an, into an image for other files, you can use binwalk. And binwalk will extract the other files that it may find uh, within the, mm. OK. This is odd. OK. So it says that it find the JZIP data compressed. OK, that might be something. Let's look into it. Um, so we can open it with 7-zip because you know we know it's an archive, and we get the file flags in a trash can. Okay, this is an ODS file. It's a pretty uh, old extension, right? But just open it and see whether we get something from it. Mm. 
it looks empty. And it is empty. So what I did, I tried the same thing again. I, I thought maybe someone was hiding something within the file that was being hidden inside the image. So I just run binwalk on it again. Um, zero. So run binwalk on the file that we just got. And let it run. And what do we get? We get a lot of files from it. So we know that the flag should have a format because that's how you that's how you usually find flags within um within an application so what i did i was i tried to search the entire folder um finding folder so i was searching for the uh, string that i that i cared about it as uh, ec sc and a, a bracket because that that's how flags begin Okay, so it found something, and down here we get the flag. And we submit it, and we get the points. Okay, great. Next task. Next, next task. Okay, in this task we get an image. Uh, the task is called broken CTF, and the image is called uh, a broken TV. Hmm. We look into it, we get some random noise. So. There must be there must be a flag somewhere inside because that's the only file that we get, but it's not really obvious at this moment how we should we should approach it. So what I did uh, because those pixels seemed pretty uh, interesting to me, um, especially because of the first pixels on the first line that seem similar. Some some files um, have a tendency to have similar bytes in the header, so I was thinking maybe there is an uh, actual file that is being uh, in, in inserted into the, the bytes of the image. So what I did was I, I opened um, I opened the image in a Python script, and I started to display the first bytes of the image. So we run this. And we get these are the, these are the the first bytes uh, in the image. So it's not the uh, header of the file; it's the actual uh, data within the image. So the first number is one three seven, second one is eighty seven eight, and so on. So let's just Google this. So one three seven, eighty, seventy eight, seventy one. Okay, PNG. Hmm. Things are starting to look well, right? 13, 10, 26, 13, 10, 26. Okay, so it seems like there is an image that's being hidden within an image, but in its actual um, image bytes, so in the pixels of the image. So the next step is pretty obvious. We just dump the, uh, the pixels into another file, so we should, get an, uh, we, we should get another image. So we run the, I run the, the second script. And it creates an image, and inside the image we get the flag. We submit it, and we get the points. Okay. Uh, since we have time, I'll show you an uh, Android task. So uh, I will actually be showing you how I solve this task. Um, usually in CTFs, there is not a certain way that you should be doing a task. The goal is to get the flag. If you manage to get the flag in one way or another, then good for you, you solved it. So you can count it as solved, even though you didn't use the method that was uh, intended by the, by the organizers. So we get an uh, APK, which is an uh, Android app. And there is a really cool tool in, um, in Linux. You can use um, APK tool to decompile an Android app. So let's just decompile the app with um, apk tool. D for decompile and the app we want to decompile. And it, it will give us some um, pseudo JVM code. It's not actual uh, Java machine code. It's just some pseudo code that we can, we can understand maybe uh, what the app is doing. So in, inside the app, there were uh, a couple of main things that we had to do. Um, we had to find an username and an admin. If we would run the app inside an Android emulator, 
a login prompt would appear. Um, so we need to get the username, the password, and a secret flag that was inside the app. I solved this task um, statically, so I didn't even run the app, and I will show you how I did it. So the uh, APK tool will create a folder, cyber in this case, and we just open it. Mm, it should have opened. Okay. So within the uh, files, I will just go directly into the decompiled app. And the main activity that we should be looking in is the, the main activity. And from this on, you just start investigating stuff like maybe you can find some interesting data within the, within the file. So what I did, first thing, search for a password. No password, go into the second main activity, search for a password, okay, we get the password. Hmm. Look around, username, password, again, okay, this, this looks good, we get the username and the password string, but they have no values yet. So we scroll down, a, hmm, this, looks like, this looks like base64, right? Then we get another string that looks like base64, so this may be some relevant information. Let's just decode it, so we echo it, and base64 decode it, right? So we get something that looks like a username. Well, it actually is the, the username uh, of the app. And if we decode the password, or what we may think is the password, we get this. Uh, at this point, I was not really sure whether these were the right username and password, but I just submitted them and they worked. So good for us, they worked uh, first time. Okay, what about that secret? So we know there, there should be a secret uh, around here. So again, let's just search for a secret. Okay, no secret in this file and searching each file, I got to this file, the hello.smally, and we get a field, my secret world words. Okay, this looks relevant, right? So let's just look into it. Hmm, okay, we see some base64 again. And what it actually does, it will copy into the secret word the value from um, from another from another fields and they are cyber security challenge. So we can get the order into which they are copied into the main secret because of their names. So what we have to do now is to find the uh, cyber security and challenge fields and their actual values that we can put together and get the, the, the overall secret. So we are lucky the, the, the last part, the challenge is directly above it. So we can get the base64 from, from here and just save it. So this is the challenge. Okay, we get back, we need to find the cyber, so let's just search for cyber in the same file. Okay, no luck. Hmm. What I did was searching the entire folder for cyber and wait for the, for, for the result. Okay. Okay, here in the registration that's molly, this line we get the cyber field and we got another base64. So this may look like the, the base64 of cyber. So we save this one as well. So this was cyber, right? Okay, and we are left with the um, security field. Security. Security. Okay, so we do the same thing for, for security. And search within the, the entire folder that uh, APK tool gave us. And inside the strings that XML, we get the base64 for security. So this is security. Okay, just use them together. So it's cyber security challenge. And let's, let's uh, decode this. And maybe we get the secret. Okay, congrats on capturing the flag, cybersecurity challenge 18. So this was the, the end of the task. We submitted it and, and got the points. 
what I what I'm trying to, to show you uh, with these dots um, is that not working? Okay, um, is that in general they get way harder than this. These are some uh, easy tasks that we have to solve during the bootcamp or the uh, finals, but they are pretty fun because you can think of uh, a lot of ways that these tasks may be solved in a different way. So I, I chose to solve them like this, but someone else may be, may be using another method. And for more advanced tasks where you can exploit the binary and so on, the things are starting to get uh, mo uh, m uh, more interesting. And uh, as I said, they are very fun and uh, educative for, for you to take part in such, such events. Okay, so if there are any questions. Okay. Mike is coming to you just in, in just a second. Uh, hi. On Hello. which place was placed Romania this year? Um, so we had some issues during the first day, and we ended up on the eighth or ninth place, I believe because during the first day we lost some points on tasks that we uh, had some difficulties in, in it. Uh, on the second day we, we did great, but we lost points in the first day and other teams were able to get more points in the first day. So ninth, thing, ninth, ninth place, I believe. So um, it happens that I work for the organization that organized Okay. This from Enisa. So uh, I want to ask you if you have any feedback that I can take back uh, in terms of organization, the platform was developed, uh, f let's say, with uh, somebody close to us. The challenges were developed in-house, part of them and part British Telecom and other sponsors, like you said. Yeah. I, I was also involved in the 2015 edition, and this year was another colleague of mine. And uh, if you can give me feedback, because I have mixed feelings, uh, I, I've heard some opinions that it was very bad, it was very, it had a different approach with the contracts and the, the, the new style, but maybe if you can give me some feedback on this so I can take back. Yeah, so in my opinion, the uh, overall was great. The main challenges were great. What you liked were the flag formats. So we had no flag format that we were searching for. In some cases, we had the flag, but we didn't know how to submit it because there was a string with spaces on it and some were uppercase, some were lowercase. The submit system was not uh, insensitive, so if you messed up one uppercase or lowercase, then it wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't get the points. Uh, there were some problems with the Wi-Fi, but yeah, that was normal because uh, there were a lot of teams that were attacking the Wi-Fi infrastructure. Uh, that's really how, uh, how things happen at this kind of, of events and you can uh, you cannot unfortunately stop this type of issues but the overall the overall feeling was was great um, I had I had a great time at the uh, finals in London okay we're gonna take some question over here as well hi uh, so you said you don't have to be specialized like through all of the, the fields but which one is your favorite um, I like I enjoy web um, although I like to take um, uh, uh, challenges from other categories, I will mostly focus on web challenges. Okay. So you said there are some seniors there. Seniors mean people that participate in the past to this competition or people that are seniors in fields, like uh, cybersecurity fields? Okay, none of them, it's just about the age. So uh, for me, it was the first time I was, I was taking part into the contest. And because I was uh, over the um, age limit for uh, the juniors, I was automatically a senior. What's the age limit? So 16 to 20 years for uh, juniors and up to 25 years for seniors. Okay. So from 21 to 25. Uh, there was a question here. Yeah, I want to ask you which of the tasks you think was most uh, difficult or interesting or challenging for you? Uh, within the demos? Uh, not from the, uh, all the contests. Okay, so I didn't actually um, look into each of the tasks because we were a team and we divided tasks, but from, which, from the tasks on which I worked, I really enjoyed the hardware hacking because it was different from the main classical uh, challenges. So we, we, we had some hardware equi equipment that we had to hack. I really enjoyed that one. Something new, always. 
We have a question over here as well. Thank you. Hi, um, you often use, for instance, Google to search for some things. Are there some limitations or is there some kind of environment you're allowed to use? Or is it just whatever you want? You can so just use whatever you want. So yeah. you can use the internet and everything. How do they um, restrict the team to the team size of 10? Is it monitored or um, so I could just cast, ask anybody? So in theory, you can just ask anybody. Yeah. Um, they may, may or may not um, see this. Um, but if you are doing this, you're ruining the... Okay, it's uh, just ethics. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just ethics. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. But you can do whatever you want, basically. Okay. Okay. okay, one or two more questions. Over there on the right. At what age did you start doing this? Um, one year and a half. So about, uh, I, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, one year and a half ago, I started doing this type of, of, of challenges, CTFs. <laughs> okay, very last question. Anyone else? There's one in the back there. I think I don't need the microphone. Do you know about Cicada? Sorry? Please use the mic. Hi. Um, do you know about Cicada, the internet mystery? No. No, there is this challenge uh, all across the world. Uh, yeah. And there is a mystery because no one knows uh, who is organizing this. And there are a lot of challenges of this type. Okay. to uh, decrypt files and from videos and pictures. So maybe it's a good information for everyone. <laughs> okay, didn't know about it. It does sound like fun. Thank you so much, Octavian, for, uh, for the presentation, for walking us through the experience. Thank you, thank you.